So you've built your machine learning models and now it's time to take them to production. What do you need to do? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. I am Priyanka Vargadia, and today we are going to talk about managing production machine learning pipelines. As you've seen through years of AI Adventures, machine learning is a lot of fun and is much more than just a novelty. Machine learning models power so many technologies in our lives, and there are plenty of new and better models just waiting to be applied to the real world. So how do you transition from experimenting with a model to actually moving it to production? Well, just as you need a quality CI-CD pipeline to maintain a robust code base at scale, you need a machine learning pipeline to help you monitor, transform, evaluate, and serve your models in production. What are the different steps involved in a machine learning workflow? Well, first you ingest the input data set and split it for training, evaluation, and testing. Then validate it, identify and remove anomalies from that data, or handle redundant features and empty values. You might have to address the detected issues, maybe finding more training data for certain categories. Then you do feature engineering to transform the data and enrich the features to improve your training, at which point the model is ready to train and tune. Once trained, evaluate the model to make sure it generalizes well enough to use in production. When the model gets the green light, you push it to production. This production environment needs to be powerful enough to support the rate of inference required by your application. Now, when does this ML workflow becomes a pipeline? Well, it's when we automate it. And the automation is necessary, especially if we want to deploy these models in production. So the question now becomes, how do we automate the machine learning workflow tasks to create an end-to-end -end pipeline for deploying our models into production. Here is a very high-level architecture of how it works. TensorFlow is running on TFX, which in turn is running inside Kubeflow pipelines, and that's running on GKE, leveraging the Google Cloud services. You can create pipelines with similar functionality using both Kubeflow pipelines and TensorFlow extended SDKs. We have an entire series on Kubeflow, which I have linked below. In this video, let's focus on TensorFlow Extended, or TFX, which is an open source end-to-end -end platform specifically designed for scalable, high-performance machine learning tasks. Here's how it works. A TFX pipeline is a sequence of components implementing the ML workflow tasks, and they are built using open source TFX libraries, which can also be used individually. This is sort of a canonical TFX pipeline. You can think of it as hello world pipeline. These orange components come out of the box with TensorFlow extended, but you can create your own components as well. Once the model is ready, you deploy it into a serving cluster in TensorFlow Serving, TensorFlow.js, TensorFlow Lite, TensorFlow Hub, or even AI platform predictions. Now, what is a TFX component? It is essentially a task that we perform in our machine learning pipeline. It has a config and it takes input from the metadata, except for the very first component, which is ingesting the data set from the original data source. It takes those inputs using an input channel, does its task and generates the output artifact, and then uses the output channel to put those back into the metadata. And that's how components communicate with each other. The upstream components will produce an artifact that the downstream component depends on, and the data flows through the pipeline by flowing through these dependencies in the metadata. Now, what is metadata? Well, it allows us to trace the lineage of the artifacts that are produced. For example, what data is the model trained with? Metadata can also be used to compare previous training runs. It also allows tracking and reuse of previously computed outputs, which saves quite a bit of time, especially for larger data sets and models. If the input to the component has not changed, we don't want to rerun the component. We should just be able to pull the last result from the cache and reuse it. Now let's go back to our standard components and understand them a little bit more. 
First off, example gen helps us ingest our data from CSV files, BigQuery, Presto, etc. It splits the data and saves it off as TF examples and TF record files. Statistics gen will make a full pass over that data and calculate statistics about it. That's important to understand our data if it is new and if it has changed over time. Schema gen then determines the schema across our data, such as what are the types of our features? And for the categorical variables, what are the valid categories? Example validator takes both of those results and looks for problems, things like the examples that have the wrong type in the particular feature or a categorical value that should not be there. Transform is where the feature engineering is done. It will convert the feature engineering that we want to do with a graph that becomes part of our model. Trainer takes that graph and the model that we have defined using TensorFlow and trains that model. Evaluator takes that trained model and does a deep analysis of the performance of that model. It looks at not just the entire data set, but also the individual slices of a data to try to understand how performance varies across different parts of our data. It can be used for fairness analysis, like seeing if your model is performing differently for different types of model users. Infra validator makes sure that we can actually deploy our model to our serving infrastructure. If both evaluator and infra validator agree, that yes, we can deploy our model, our evaluator has checked to make sure that the model is actually better than what we have in production, then the pusher will push it to one of our deployment targets. So that was a quick overview of TensorFlow Extended, which helps us engineer our machine learning pipelines so we can deploy our models in production. In the next episode, we will see TFX and Kubeflow pipelines in action in Cloud AI platform pipelines. Until then, I would love to hear the topics that will help you get better at machine learning and AI. Drop them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.